Welcome back to the channel everyone. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that last video. Seemed to get a little bit of traction. Seems the titles really affect the algorithm uh, and on this platform. But regardless, I appreciate all of you guys' support, comments, likes, everything you guys do. It's a, it's a pleasure to be able to communicate to you guys and relay my insights, at least. <clears throat> I'd like to focus a little bit about um, the mirror aspect of this reality a bit more in this video um, in terms of how our beliefs really do shape this perception and uh, its ulterior design so that we can be more aware of what is actually happening around us right so throughout our lives you know there seems to be a predetermined programming a predetermined script um, that then begins to shape our perceptions which are also going to be predetermined based on the programming and once we have that program implemented into us the, the implant given to us we then walk around this reality reflecting or projecting that uh, trauma or that programming onto the reality which then reflects it back uh, or reflects it towards us reflects it back is uh, um, uh, redundant but um, that's ulteriorly, or ultimately, that's the, the goal of the hierarchy here, right? Of the objective of, of I think, these beings. Um, that we are, at some level, traumatized to create karma, which then keeps us spinning over and over again. And creates work for us to do, which creates friction and a, um, an, an extraction of energy. Uh, that can then be you know, used for their benefit but a theory that you know I think is worth promoting or is worth entertaining is that this likely was we can say even a neutral it is a neutral sandbox right a neutral algorithm a neutral um, uh, coding in its essence but of course it was let's say degraded potentially and had started out from the original source codes in you know the original source realms but was taken sort of mimicked or mirrored and degraded because it was lacking that spirit that became let's say waste or became um, dead in a sense All right now we can explain the beauty that we see here uh, based on the inner projections that we give it, based on the inner source codes that we already have, that we came into here with it to give it life, right? Otherwise, it would have been just death, potentially. So we promote the cycle of life and death simply by us being here. We cannot sustain it to be fully life, potentially. Or maybe we came here to f try and give it life, yet... I don't know we just haven't been able to change the programming or we got tricked and trapped along the way but essentially our our spirit our light essence our true light our true spirit projects that outer beauty right and then that can be of course tweaked because we were given this mind parasite to then affect uh, the spirit in terms of what it projects right so if I have a projector but over that projector I begin to put one lens and then another filter and then a different color filter then all of a sudden without even changing the spirit essence because the spirit essence cannot be changed in my opinion I can alter its projection so the mind is a filter the mind is something the spirit engages with but then filters the projection that is being emitted right um, so that way you know everything here is fractured to begin with right like I mentioned the codes the codes are fractured mimicked uh, copied and in some way mirrored right in order to create that duality we have good versus bad uh, light versus dark um, you know right versus left uh, things like that because that way that's the only way that you can oppose two things that's the only way two things can can 
you know, fight against each other or create friction in that sense. Um, now, I believe that this concept also exists in the source realms, but it, they are unified. Things are, when they, when, they, when they come out of the essence, they are still unified, very similar to the ray of a sun. And I think I've given this example before. When the sun you know, emits its rays, it's not fracturing itself. It's just giving smaller parts of itself. It's still unified. It's still a unified light um, point, light beam. Right, containing all the elements of the sun is just that it all the sun is then a larger group of that smaller individuation. And you know, a lot of people make this, the point that we are the same here, but I don't think so. I think we've we've been fractured, just like light uh, when it passes to through let's say rain it creates the prism effect. It is fractured into seven. That's why the number seven is so. Uh, prominent here because that is the structure of that fractured uh, unity, that fractured uh, unification of oneness. So when you have fractured bits of, let's say, our personas, they're more easily controllable and more easily, more easily pit against each other, right? That's why we have so many wars, that's why we have uh, so many people fighting each other. Of course, the perfect scenario would be everyone working together. But even then, we don't seem to be fully unified because at one point we had the masculine and feminine merged within us and we were more, let's say, even androgynous, not only on the outside, but within, right? Um, we weren't so far leaning um, on one side and even the brain, like we know from uh, our mainstream science and you know anyone that's <laughs> looked into this stuff, um, it has the left and right hemis hemisphere, right, which are united at the center, but, and sociopaths have a smaller lining uh, that connects the two hemispheres, and they're not able to communicate with one, with one another, which creates a lack of empathy for other people. So that that, I, that analogy, that example, I think, can be taken to a much larger lar lar much larger scale in terms of the universe at large in which um, one half is just not able to communicate with each other because this being was potentially born without that other half this demiurgic being or the creator architect of this whole reality which I don't think is really a, it's a creator it's a it's, it's this AI that is able to mimic everything and then copy it Right, and then uh, it creates fractals uh, of the whole larger image, right? Which, again, is us. We are giving it life, and we are being used to create smaller and smaller simulations, or more and more dense simulations. I think. Therefore, at its essence, the the AI isn't, let's say, evil. You know, a lot of different philosophers, different cultures. Uh, have different descriptions of this being one being benevolent one being malevolent like the Gnostics and I believe the Greeks and the Egyptians or some other culture considers it more neutral in terms of it's just a fool right even itself it declares it's uh, I think I believe it declares itself as a fool but it just it knows nothing else and it's neutral it's experimenting rather um, and therefore it can only reflect to us what we are so if we are infiltrated by the mind parasite uh, you know a fractal of itself then it will refre reflect that fear it will reflect <laughs> I can't say it reflect today reflect anger it will reflect um, any other emotions that you know we think we are experiencing and we are going through at the time because they're not integrated, so we're not able to 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 um, uh, regulate our nervous system, regulate our our spirit in that regard, because we're so dominated by these emotions. But if we can maintain a very similar um, state, as it is a neutrality and a state of awareness and observation towards it, it has to respect that. I think, and the universe, which is its its body potentially also has to respect that it's the same mirror principle 
that's why things like law, these law of attraction and you know you get what you are type of ideas do seem to work in this reality because you are the one projecting it you essentially do have um, the power here in terms of what you believe in terms of what you accept as true your own perspectives so then that that then leads us into a, a greater point a greater perspective in terms of what beliefs what and what groups are we allowing ourselves to be into are we, are we allowing ourselves to tell us truths um, and how are they how are they shaping our beliefs right how are they going to affect us first of all in this level of reality and second of all upon leaving the body for example a lot of groups um, pander to people's sort of uh, wounds right so traumas so early programmed belief systems that you know maybe their parents didn't give them enough love didn't, didn't give enough attention which resulted in low self-worth and confidence and you know even earlier groups like religion may have maintained that authority over them similarly to their parents and kept them in a lower state of confidence well lo and behold they break out of that they sort of wake up to deeper truths and here comes new age deeply pandering to their ego not their spirit their ego their their wounding telling them oh no you're special you know constantly calling them dear or darling right like we see with all the channelers and making them feel a sense of euphoria and this false light love which then creates a, a screen and all of their logical uh, and uh, logical abilities and discernment go out the window because they feel better this is the same tactic that is happening in um, uh, these NDEs right you feel better you got that high that you haven't gotten in so long and you start ignoring red flags right very similar to relationship like uh, like I mentioned in the video uh, the matrix in our relationship with others and it and that wasn't the title but it's similar it's, you'll find it so when they play on that then our beliefs can then be shifted our programming can be shifted because they attack or they hit the wound right very similar to these entities and the implants that, that happen they can only attach themselves if an attachment or an area to be attached is present such as the trauma the wound so you can clear yourself as many times as you want you can you know go to so many readings and clearings and energy healings and whatever you want to remove these implants but if you don't address the issues they will keep coming back because their weaknesses in your in your field you're susceptible to to implantation so they play on the ego and the, the beliefs are then shaped where you swing to the other side of the pendulum of overconfidence of uh, self-empowerment to the point that now you have these spiritual truths that no one else has very similar to how these entities act they claim to have these spiritual truths that you don't have and they are so glad to share it with you because you're special right so boom you you've then moved to the other side of the spectrum only for you to fall back and of course that movement creates energy again it's a withdrawal of energy they raise you up push you down and you have to get back up right and that's the, the, the trick and deception but even then with the soul trap concept this is why I consider everything largely a deception it's a matrix it's a trick but the trick then creates a trap but the soul trap concept creates the idea of needing to go to all of these layers of the matrix which likely exist these belief shaped layers again the astrals are um, created largely by us largely by our consciousness um, now of course there are many other let's say NPCs in the midst but they don't have creative power they do seem to be able to affect the, the consciousness uh, in terms of oh look 90% of people think this and then you know here you are thinking differently and you're like well must be stupid if 90% of the people think this <laughs> why am I the only one that doesn't think so right so that's how they use it to affect people but largely our consciousness is the one that has created these astral layers they were already there I think before this physical layer 
astral is shaped um, because the astral affects the physical. So here we are adding to these astral layers with this belief now that we have to go through all these layers and uh, there's, you know, don't go into the light, go into the void and then go here and don't go there and this and that and that and we create this step-by-step -step process that we have to um, follow. Well, I think we're only creating our own obstacles by, by using this method because again, um, if we have the power of projection, then we can ultimately shape the reality with our projection as best to, uh, as we wish with our own intention. Um, now it may take longer in, than in the astrals due to the time difference here, the, 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 the delay uh, and the elongation of time, but our ability to, to, to say no, I don't want to undergo this process and to use our discernment here and in the astral is our greatest capability I think because ultimately we get to choose. That's why it's not really a trap because we at some level seem to, seem to have chosen this, right? It was seemingly coercion, right? We weren't given all the necessary information and knowledge upon entering but it's but we were deceived into choosing this for our benefit right that's the only thing they have it's this deception it's the idea of karma of lessons oh it's for your growth it's for your benefit what what power does a cheesy salesman have over you when selling you a cheesy product or a useless product nothing the only thing they can use is telling you well you need it you absolutely need this and it's running out and you know limited time act now 50% off whatever they'll throw numerous uh, tactics at you right study sales right that's how these things work it's this make a quick decision you need it and you know act now so in terms of uh, the afterlife scenario the same thing you're approached right away you have no th time to think to to realize where am I what's going on right you went through a whole lifetime ups and downs you know you're still thinking about that like hey well, i'm glad to be out of there maybe um maybe you even think you're still alive it depends and so you're kind of in a state of confusion you may not have achieved a level of gnosis in your lifetime and then these beings approach you because you're vulnerable you're like a you know wounded deer almost but you know an interesting movie clip i forgot where i saw this but a woman is a basically dead She's in the afterlife and there, she's in this Egyptian scenario where her heart is being weighed against the feather. And she's like, yeah, of course my heart's going to weigh more. I mean, it was, it's a tough life down there. I had to make difficult choices. You know, I wasn't a saint per se. So she's like, who are you to judge me? And he's like, yeah, he was getting kind of mad. He's like, you know what, fine. All your life, you've never believed in anything. So I'm going to send you to the void. And I think that's a very interesting thing to say because i think that's what the void really is and it's it's the primal initial level of the matrix the womb of potentially sophia where this demiurge maybe even resides where no beliefs have been ultimately shaped yet nothing no no structure has been given yet it's the the, the birthplace of these beliefs be beliefs, be lives, I don't know. <laughs> so if you don't have any beliefs, that's where you go. And it can be like a heaven or a hell to you. Some people just enjoy being it. It's like, it's very peaceful. And some people are absolutely tortured by it. They feel incredibly lonely and alone. But that is, it seems like the foundation of the matrix system. And even the Bible, uh, first there was the word and the word create a light or something like that but um, it starts out in a void essentially right God created everything in seven days but it started on this blackness there was no light before it um, so the void seems to be like this you know birthplace of realities but I don't think it's the point of origination for us right it's rather the surface level of the black hole, 
uh, the, surf, the horizon, surface horizon. Um, so in that case, oh, and by the way, the the girl's like, no, I'm not going to the void. And then she like snapped her fingers and she's like, I'm out. <laughs> and she went somewhere else. She went maybe to the, the true source homeland. But you don't have to accept anything they tell you. They have absolutely no authority over you. Um, uh, and that scene, I've uh, through many witness cases where they may be dragged away, their soul may be taken away, they, they may have entered in some contracts unknowingly. But again, you can sever these contracts with your intention. Your intention is much more powerful. You can say, oh, well, okay, at the time, I wanted to. Now, I don't want to because at that time, I was insane, right? Um, even in the court of law. Insanity is an excuse to get out of uh, out of uh, contracts or coercion or not having all the right knowledge. Although I don't know legally what the term is for that or if that's incredibly true. But I know coercion and uh, insanity for sure are true. Because hey, I was not in a proper mental state to sign this contract, or I was a minor. I was you know young. I was too young to understand what the heck I was signing. This can't be. Uh, this can't be a, a, good, a true contract. So yeah, then it becomes null and void. So it's the same thing, in my opinion. You you claim your power back, and you say no. But again, we have to be careful what any of these groups are promoting to us with the belief systems, because we then begin shaping these belief systems um, with our projection, right? with our own reality. And it really comes back to us, to the filters that are in front of us and how we are looking at the world. Can we hold perspectives? Can we hold ideas without necessarily giving them belief or our power? Can we say, oh, okay, that's true. Okay, that's also true. Oh, that's true over there. Let's put them all together. Maybe we get a larger truth. So that's what we need to look at as a whole. And then upon leaving this reality, uh, we can make a more conscious choice with our own intent, not being guided by anything or anyone or approached because, you know, we always have to ask questions. We always have to use our discernment and say, well, is this truly where I wanna be? Is this, or is this another layer of the dreamlike reality that I've simply woken up into, similarly to Inception? How many layers of the dream do you have to wake up until you get to base reality, right? Hope that made sense. Uh, that was a lot more than I thought I would share. Um, but if you enjoyed it, let me know what you thought in the comments. Give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.